Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Uh, right. So, pedalboard challenge number two. Well, not really a challenge. This came about where um, we had the CE1 plugged in, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody said, "Oh, wouldn't it be great if we could hear the CE1 plugged into a tape echo?" So we've we've kind of failed, like from from <laughs> part one, because we've managed not to get a tape echo. However, this is the impracticality board. Everyone said they'd love to see Dan's most impractical pedal board possible, and here it is. Yeah, I, I'd still gig with it. I would <laughs> absolutely still gig with this thing. I, yeah, so a lot of these pedals are vintage, big box, um, you know, obviously apart from the, the headroom and the, and the alter ego, but actually, this, uh, only three of these pedals are vintage. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, you know, the CE1, um, the, the fabulous... Um, uh, Musitronics. We haven't seen that phasal. before, have we, on that pedal show? The Musitronics Phasal? Yeah. No. I don't think we've used it yet. Oh, okay. Or maybe we did very early on, but we certainly haven't seen it in recent history. No. So it's nice to see that. Yeah. I, I, I love it. Just wonderful, wonderful piece of engineering and stuff. Yeah, so that and then the Mistress. And these are all, you know, big box pedals. And I thought, yeah. what else do I have that's massive and, and impractical? And so, because what happened was, when I was... Um, I've just come back from Japan, from doing a bunch of gigs over there, and I had to take a pedal board, obviously, and I had to have a bunch of different sounds. And when we did the uh, the flanger episode, yeah, and we were saying about the how you know obviously the electric mistress, you know, arguably my favourite pedal of all time, but for the gig that I was doing, there was there was one song that had four bars that I needed a little bit of flanger in. And I used the the mower, the little mower, the mower, just for that thing. And I had to fly with a pedal board, and you know it was a you have to consider weight and all that sort of stuff. And also because that thing is so old and valuable and stuff. And the reality is that for just that split second that I needed a flanger for, the mower was fantastic. As you can see, Daniel. Yes. <laughs> so um, we, w w when we started talking about this. Um, putting this massive board together, I said, well, I, all right then, why don't I just put a mini board together that's pretty much got everything that there's on the big board, but on a little mini board there. So that's the <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the reason for that. But then you can see what's on there. So what are we going to do? We're going to have a little exploration through the gloriousness of... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Two apps we're using today. We're using the Hampstead and the Two Rock. And it, that is the Hampstead... Artist 20 plus RT. Nice. And Two Rock Studio Pro 35. Yes. And together they sound thusly. <laughs> Completely dry, no reverb or anything in the amps because we have these interesting array of pedals here. We do. Right, where do we start? Right, where do we, so we start at the, at the front? Okay. Yeah? So. You've got a boost there, I see, Dan. I have a boost. And so do I. Right. My boost sounds like this. Which is the uh, the Kingsley Page. We, we can't compare because we're playing different guitars and the way it's set up, we can't just switch between, we can't put that guitar into that board. So um, it won't be a direct comparison, but you just kind of get the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, TC Spark Booster. So here, here we go with the uh, the two amps. So you'll hear that this guitar sounds a little bit darker than that one. Doesn't have all the sparkly presence. TC Spark Booster. Oh, that's loud. There's a lot in that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very good. We'll do combinations in a minute. Right, what's your first overdrive? Right, so the, uh, yeah, the well, the main overdrive is the Royal Overdrive, which is this one here. Which is my Royal Overdrive. Which is Mick's Royal Overdrive. <laughs> It's chewy and delicious. And... 
That's, that's magical. We've done that overdrive a few times before on the show and it just does absolutely everything. It does that really massive headroom, low gainy pushed thing. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, I mean, I, just... I, was, I was going from about, hopefully you could see in the, in the detail shot, but if you couldn't, going from about sort of one o'clock on the gain control down to about nine o'clock and just adjusting the master mm. and switching in the extra gain and everything. It really is... It's a very special thing. Seriously, seriously good. Yeah. So um, to give me some gain options, I've got the SL drive here by Exotic. Sounds really martially. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the um, SL drive super lead. Yeah. Uh, it suits that guitar actually. It's. I really like. Because you're not a huge fan, are you? It's probably a bit gainy for you. Would you say? No, it's not that it's a bit gainy. It's just for for whatever reason, I have other things that I prefer. Yeah. But. I've seen I've seen you use it loads and you really like it. I like it yeah, because yeah. Um, it, uh, most people know that I tend to like a mid mid boosty type mm. thing, and I don't often need that kind of rock sound. You're right. But when I do need that rock sound, in fact, I did a, a gig a few weeks uh, a couple of months back now, a, a, an open air thing where I used that and the two rock and this guitar pretty much for the whole gig. Wow. And it was just rock. It was just rock all the way. Nice. So just to. I'll put the SL drive on, then I'll boost it in the front with the spark, yep. and then I'll boost it afterwards the tube screamer. Okay. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Okay, so mega gain stacking going on there. Spark makes it all juicier. Actually, mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised that it gives it a bit more bottom end as well. It gives you yeah. a bit more bottom end into the SL, and then the tube screamer cuts the bottom end a bit more mid. Just pushes those mids. Yeah, so pretty much every kind of gain. James Bay uses the spark. Does he? Where's the horn? Oh, yeah. Where is the horn? Behind you. James Bay? <laughs> Dan blowing out the vocal microphone there. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, James, but all right. So 
You well, want to do the same thing. Three right. overdrives. Yep. Let's, so, let's see how they all stack up together. And I like that my version of the chew screen is this. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. Sort of just a darker green. Yeah, I'm just going to give a, a little visual representation of how big Dan's board is. <laughs> and then here's how big mine is. Okay, so I'm going to um, do the Royal Overdrive. Then same thing, I'll push the front end with the page. Yep. Then I'm going to put the juggler after the page. Uh, sorry, after the Royal Overdrive. Yep. Have a go at this one. Just when we said we couldn't swap guitars, we found a way of doing it. Okay, old school, you yeah. ready? Yeah. <laughs> pushing our audio meters there but yeah okay well that was a little bit interesting just to hear the two guitars yeah so oh, all right initial observations then <clears throat> clearly so you heard both guitars through both pedal boards and the headroom in that and the clarity is just it's on a different level isn't yeah. it yeah this sounds good there's no doubt about it great some good sounds in there but pushing that SL drive um, with the spark, things started to close down, yep. didn't they? And yep. you lost that dynamic, whereas that just seemed to have headroom for days. And, and bear in mind, we're, you know, the amps are exactly the same, set exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So nothing's changing at the amp end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Should we move on? Yeah, let's move on. What do you, what do you think? Sorry, I'm, I'm yakking. It's fascinating. So I've got two valve, we've got a valve overdrive there, and basically a valve preamp there yeah and the the dynamics they have while being you know while having loads of gain and everything but the dynamic range that you got within that is just wonderful yeah um, the sort of sound that you find instantly inspiring yeah. you know uh, yeah I loved it I mean I'm so every time I play the Royal Overdrive it's like I'm so impressed with it it 
you can hear it doesn't have the bottom end that the SL driver's got, but that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, just the, it's the, the shape of that sound is just so spot on. Yeah, because you know, you know, once you once you get into a band situation, all that bottom end's just gone anyway, isn't yep. it? And it's just mush. So. Yeah, but it's I I love the way it's voiced. It's great that with with these two pedals there, I mean, you know, awesome. Yeah, really, and, you really know, awesome. we, we sort of. There are many other pedals you could choose, but we've sort of chosen these arbitrarily. Of course. Just, Just because they're big. Yes. Wicked. Right. Okay, so let's have a look at... Uh, the, let's go to the next one. We're going to have a look at the flanges now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I so was, I, was, look, I don't have a small flanger, and Dan's little Moore flanger was on his board, so I, I popped onto the uh, the internet. You may have seen it. And uh, <laughs> saw these, saw these uh, Moore little square things. It looks great. Look, it's, it's, it's tiny. <laughs> no, I love it. So, okay, and of course Dan's got his um, Electric Mistress yeah. favourite. Yeah, we fave. Come right. on then. Okay, so, the Mistress. Even with all that clock noise and everything, there is just something about the sound of that thing. Yeah, we, in the um, flanges video that you may have already seen, if not, there's a flanges video where we compared the electric missus to, uh, to a few other flanges. That the, the bottom end roll off is really noticeable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I I really like it. Just gets me. That just gets me that pedal. Nowhere near as lovable as the, as the, and it doesn't roll off the bottom end, and it's not as even. I've been messing around with the controls, and it's still quite hard to get a fairly extreme mm. flange out of it. Anyway, okay, so uh, I'll put some drive on that. Yeah. 
So I switched on a bit of reverb there. Um, Dan's obviously got the headroom. The headroom, yeah. So which is a proper spring reverb in yeah. a. Uh... Okay, so my good friend Paul Stacy, uh, who um, I put his uh, pedal board together for a couple of gigs that he's doing with uh, the bass player from Dire Straits, John Eelsley, and he had this in his board, and I just the had bass a, player. The bass player, okay. Yeah. And he had this on his board and had a playthrough it and I just fell in love with it. It was amazing. So it's a proper spring reverb in a pedal. You've got two different sets of um, of tone and level controls. So so yeah, I get sound just without any reverb. Then with the reverb. Now the reason it's the reason it's doing that is because the board's a bit uh, it's shaking on the on the box at the moment. So because it's a spring, it's exactly the same as the spring in your amp. But anyway, you get this. switch to the next one I can make a more extreme type sound Just it's really, it. it's very, very good. We did, um, I think it's called Six Awesome Reverbs, if I'm remembering correctly, or mm -hmm. something like that, where mm -hmm. we looked at the headroom in more detail alongside some other pedals. But if you, so let's compare that to this just for a second then. I'll put it on the spring setting and see what we can get. Okay. <laughs> You can hear the kind of digitalness of it, can't you? That yeah. it's, it's especially in comparison. That's yeah. where you hear it. Yeah, yeah. But you know, by the same token, the old headroom can't do this. It's my favourite setting on the uh, on the Hall of Fame. It's not, funnily enough, I was about to say it can't do this either, but that gives you that, it almost gives you that kind of small room reflective surface type sound, mm. even though it's a spring reverb. Well, because it's got a tone control on there, yeah, if I yeah. turn the tone control up. Yeah. It's so good! Sounds like a bathroom, um, which this one's called Tile on the Hall of Fame. Which is kind of more of a, you know, an overt 
short delay. Well, yeah, if I turn the reverb down on this one and tie it up. clear difference there Dan? Yeah there's a clear difference. I do like the Hall of Fame. I put that on loads of boards. I actually put that on um, on Guthrie Govan's board <laughs> when, when he's doing the Stephen Wilson gig on the on his first big board I did for him because um, he had a lot of reverb sounds he needed to get. He, he yeah. made that thing sound fantastic like he makes everything sound fantastic but it is a great pedal. I really like the Hall of Fame. Also comes in a mini version as well which um, we don't have but uh, so I've just the used Hoff. The, Yeah the Hoff. And that, that uses TC's tone print, um, well that one does as well, where you can beam in different sounds, which we'll maybe come to in a minute. Yeah. Okay, reverb. So that's the reverb. Quick, let's have a, so we've done flanging, let's mm -hmm. do phasing just for a, a quickie. Okay, okay, so this is the... You've just got a small phaser there, this is the I think. This is the Musitronics <laughs> Phase or 2. Um, and I, I do love this pedal. Uh, what we'll do, right, so here's just the, just the sound of the Kingsley. Now what this has is a feedback control, very similar to a, uh, a flanger, where it's taking a small part of the signal and feeding it back into the circuit. Without it, you get this. <laughs> so that it just that feedback controller just making it a more dramatic sounding effect. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh. uh, hence that like crazy roll that we got exactly. that we got in there. Okay. Exactly. Let's see how the um, uh, Tone City Summer Orange compares. <laughs> I've got. The, I, I have a challenge. I've got the challenge today, haven't I, Dan? You let's, do. Let's be honest. <laughs> Okay, I thought for a second there it wasn't going to do the that extreme, and it doesn't go as it anywhere near as extreme as that. No, and it's definitely got a bit of a <laughs> in it, mm, hasn't it? Mm. So, but uh, you know, for for a basic phase, for seven quid. Yeah, <laughs> it's more than seven quid. Um, yeah, actually, might be worth reflecting on that just for a, for a time here. What do we got? Oh, Two hundred and fifty, six hundred, eight fifty. Yep. Can you get those? Uh, you can get them for about 250 quid. Okay, 1100 quid. New, a new uh, dual function Kingsley 300 quid. Get that here, 300 quid. Yeah. yeah, so 1400. Uh, 300 quid. Uh, 1700. 
Two hundred quid. Really? Get those two hundred quid? Yeah, you can. Let's call it two grand. All right. Uh, that's two hundred ninety or something. Yeah, I, I should know. Two thousand three hundred. Two thousand five hundred. Three thousand. Two hundred. Two hundred. So about about three, three point two thousand pounds for Dan's board there. Uh, let's see, ten p. Ten ninety nine, <laughs> no. So uh, seventy quid, eighty quid, I think. So one hundred and fifty. They're about two hundred quid, aren't they? Yeah, one hundred and eighty. Yeah. So three hundred and sixty. Uh, sixty quid. Yeah. Four ten. I think they're about forty quid, aren't they? Yep. Something like that. Anyway, three fifty, three seventy, three eighty. Eighty quid for those. Yes. Yeah. Probably. Probably around about five hundred pounds. Yep. It's a huge, massive difference. Yeah. You know. So yeah. Yeah. Just to just to just to put it in context. Just to put it in context. No, absolutely worth doing that. Uh, okay. Right, chorus. Chorus. Okay. My. Um, so yeah, my C one. We've just done. We very recently did a show on choruses where the C one was featured heavily. So if you want to see more of the C one, please watch that. But. That is nice. It's not bad, is it? I it's think not bad. When we did the um, when we did the chorus video, we we were quite surprised. Not well, actually, surprise is the wrong word. We were impressed with the angel wing, given that it's not particularly expensive. Um, It's so good. It's it's it is just so good. It is absolutely in a league of its own, isn't it? Yeah. I think even alongside the other kind of high end choruses that we used, um, it definitely has its own thing. And you really like that crunchy thing that it has. Yeah, because because the little preamp in it, when you dig in, yeah, it just it becomes a, like a crunchy overdrive. It's not a nice, particularly nice sounding thing, but yeah, it really it. adds. Mm. It, it's it's crazy good. And you've ch you've done a mod to the input on that, haven't you? Yeah. So originally these are made for keyboards. Right. Right. So that little this little level control here. It's have right you, have, have you ever been to the Hammond Organ Hall at, at Frankfurt? No. Frankfurt Music Messer. There's a whole hall. Well, a bit of big bit of a hall devoted to kind of organs. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I must go and check that out. <laughs> it's kind of you know it's. My grandparents have one of the very first Hammond organs in Queensland, Australia. Really? Yeah. They still got the Leslie. Uh, I have a Hammond organ at, at, in Queensland waiting for me no somewhere. With the Leslie? I uh, don't think it has the Leslie. Oh. I know. I know. We could have got it air freighted. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, anyway. Yes, the, so, yeah. The, the thing about the C1, when you dig in... Just, yeah. just crunches up around the edges and yeah. love it. I love it. You do love it. Um, you do love it. But that's yeah, that's fundamentally a part of the, the sound of that chorus. Um, but I think the angel wing sounds great. It doesn't sound yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, for for whatever it costs, forty quid or something. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and it's just a little bit smaller. Yeah. Just a small. Yeah. Right. So the last thing we'll have a look at is the delay. Now, I I didn't get a tape delay for today because that's just not fair to anything else. Every time that we've 
We have to do that. We have to get a tape delay because we have to hear the tape delay. With the C1. With the okay. C1. We're agreed. But what I have been asked is the like the times for mm. um, TC things. Do they sound different than the standalone units? And indeed, okay. the mini units. Sounds like I need my um, beaming app of, of dreams. Okay. Just to see how similar they are. Right. So what do you got dialed in there? You've got a... Uh, I have a... the. DMMC, which is the Deluxe Memory Man. Okay, I'll find a tone print for the Deluxe Memory Man okay. while he's entertaining you with musical loveliness. <laughs> Right, I found one. This is Dan Huff's tape delay. Dan Huff is Dan a Huff. absolutely mega guitar player. Incredible guitar player. All over player. all kinds of brilliant Amazing things. session, yeah, yeah, guys. Just, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Tremendous. Have you met Dan Huff? I haven't. You haven't? So, so we can't give him up. No, I haven't no, met Dan okay. Huff. I don't know anything about him uh, other than I've heard him play the guitar a lot. Ready? Yeah, I think this works. Mm. Beam to pedal! Oh. Just freaks me out every time. It actually works. Yeah, kind of more analogy than tape to me, mm -hmm. would you say? Yeah. Okay, Dan will play a bit more and I'll find something radically different for when, when we come back. That guitar never fails to amaze me with how loud and quiet it gets. It's, the it's, dynamic range is unbelievable. Yeah, no, it is. It is amazing. So that's why I keep if I keep looking down at the um, audio meters. Right. So this was the last uh, the last thing we had on the flashback. Yeah, which was the tape delay. Mm -hmm. And now let's go for Misha Mansour's Bulb Twenty Two Ninety. Didn't get it. Let's try again. Oh, oh. Does that not kill you like someone's drilling your fillings? I'm <laughs> playing rock bands for years, mate. I can't hear anything up there. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so oh, it's got some go. modulation here, here. on it.
play something like Misha Mansour, you know. <laughs> Actually, I've met Misha Mansour a few times. Hey, very good. A very lovely chap he is too. Misha Mansour plays the guitar, nothing like that, by the way. But yeah, so just to just to show we've done this before but mm. just to show again that the flashback despite the flashback mini sorry despite mm. its tiny little footprint there um you can it sounds ace get totally absorbed in the uh, app as i did there yeah and just beam in many of the sounds that you'll find on that mm. on that one yeah it's very cool it's very cool very cool yeah so here's the question you got a gig tonight Yep. You have to take one board in its entirety. Yeah, no question. It would be that one. Right. Um, I don't know if it will come through on the audio, but the difference in dynamic response, frequency mm. range, the dynamics of playing, the kind of... I was, I was struggling a little bit to... Maybe because they're unfamiliar sounds to me, but I was struggling to play because I wasn't finding the sounds that inspiring. Mm. Which is not to say they're bad, they just say I'm not used to them. I'm used to more of that kind of level yeah. of clarity and yeah, feedback yeah. through the whole through the whole system. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, would I pay for it? Absolutely not. I'd go and buy that 335 I'm guessing about. <laughs> what, about what about you? I have paid for it, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I mean... Of course, I could very happily, very easily gig with this. I've gigged with boards. I was going to say, you're, when, when I first met you, your board wasn't massively dissimilar to that. No, no. The, you know, it, my first board had the CU1 on it. You know, and I've been playing with the headroom. I had the mistress on it. You know, these are sounds that really connect with me. Mm. And uh, I'm very happy to... You know, look, I've been dragging a Marshall 4x12 around for years. I've got no problem with a big pedal board, you know, but there is definitely times when that isn't appropriate. Mm. You know, if I'm, if I've got a gig that I'm just sitting in for a couple of songs, then wheeling that out just yeah. is, is, you know, I wouldn't make too many changes to that to be very happy with it. The first thing yeah. I would do would be to put a switcher on there. Yeah. So um, if not G2, then a quartermaster. I use a quartermaster 6 mm. for, for a simpler board. And I think that would help keep some of those pedals out of the way each other yeah. a bit more. I'd probably yeah. swap a couple of the, um, maybe the modulations, certainly the, the phaser. Mm. I'd swap that out. I don't ever use a flanger, so mm. that wouldn't be on there. But in terms of the overdrives, they were... Good overdrive sounds, Fantastic. I thought. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, and the Hall of Fame and Flashback Mini I do use, yeah. so um, it's not a million miles away from being something... Sure. You know, of, of, of good integrity. Yeah. I do think that s separating... what I don't know how you feel about this, but three or four pedals on a board, three or four simple pedals on a board, I've got no need for a switching device. Mm -hmm. Five, six, once the power starts getting a bit more... You know, you've got a few more things going on. You've got more pedals that don't like working with each other. With each other. That's when I find, anyway, that the benefit of having some kind of independent loop mm. option really does make a big difference. Sure, definitely. And, you know, just the fact that you're taking things out of your signal path when you... Yeah. Not, that's the big thing. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, but I don't know what the bypass is like on the uh, Tone City pedals. But the, I mean, the TC bypasses are all great. You know, obviously the tube screamer is a buffered thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think one of the reasons I have to use a G2 on this board is because, you know, you put the boss pedal and the electric mistress together and in bypass, you have no no sound left. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's terrible. Yeah. Um, you know, to be honest, that the electric mistress really was the one... The initial motivation I had to creating this thing because it was so hard to use on a normal pedal. So board. hard to use. <laughs> Funny. And every time that you, every time I had it on the board, it's like, is there something wrong here? And when you kicked it in, like the sound was amazing, but the level dropped. I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> I've, I've just got. <laughs> I don't know why I've just got this vision of this guy driving along with his head out the sunroof, going, I'm getting a lot of wind here. What I need <laughs> is a windshield. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's a great windshield, mate. Great windshield. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's like, so you know, it's not without its hassles. Like you couldn't do what you've done. No. With that lot. Yeah, yeah. It'd be very, very difficult. 
So, yeah, but there we go. I thought that was fascinating. Could, could, to be honest, I didn't know. I was. I thought, man, I, I just they could be amazing because I, I love the Tube Screamer Mini. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, and the Spark is great. The SL Drive, not necessarily my cup of tea, but I've heard you on it sound yeah. incredible. I thought this, you know, wow, I could um, I could have a whole redundant board here, but after you know hearing it, I thought. No, yeah, there's a clear difference. There, there is definitely a clear difference. I hope difference. it comes through in the audio yeah, yeah. that we've recorded. Um, there is a clear difference. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, let's finish up with some uh, nice sound combinations. Okay. Mmm, what a tasty beverage. So much fun. There so we go. Much fun. There we go. Excellent. Cheers, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.